Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Hey, I want to talk to you about Audible. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. Audible offers incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business. Look, my personal favorite is motivation, you know? So I've always got my Audible app fired up. Right now, I'm reading The Plot. Although, by this reading, I should say I'm listening to it on Audible. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere, while traveling, working out, walking, doing chores. You decide. Try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. That's audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. One of my best friends, Sonia, is recently divorced and has three smaller kids. And she's ready to date. And I told her, have you heard about Stir? Stir is the number one dating app designed for single parents. Dating as a single parent does not mean that you're looking for a new co-parent. Most single parents are just looking for fun, meet new people without any pressure or judgment. Did you know that single parents rank higher on emotional maturity and the ability to have a work-life balance? I want to date a single dad now. <laughs> you should do that, Ronnie. You never know. I mean, it might work out really well. Listen, Stir is where you don't have to apologize for having a hectic schedule. Your kids go to bed at 8. You don't have to. Stir is the app designed for parents who just happen to be single. Go to stir.com slash WWC today and get 25% off any Stir subscription package or send to your single friends to try it out. That's 25% off at stir.com slash WWC. Watch what crap is. Watch what crap is. Who cares what happens when there's so much that crap is? Crap is. Crap is. Crap Hello, Philadelphia. Oh, what do you have in here? Oh, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Miraval bag you nice. have here. So sorry, we're starting a little late. I just uh, had to leave rehab, my mental health rehab facility. Sometimes in life, when we make mistakes, it's important to take responsibility at a facility that's equipped to deal with it. Like Miraval Resorts in Arizona. Dude, I am so livid at the Miraval Resort for posting that thing on Instagram. I have never been more offended in my life. How dare you? You are a resort that I'm calling a rehab facility, and I expect more from you. It's a classic move done in such a clunky fucking way. You got to hand it to those yeah. people. I mean, what a great idea. I'm taking care of my mental... Guess what? I was taking care of my mental health when I read about it. I was sitting with a bottle of Tito's and a box of Oreos. Yeah. Okay. Wow, well, it's a Saturday night. You know, this is Coachella weekend. Coachella, it's Coachella weekend, baby! Yeah. You guys are all obligated to take as many photos as possible to drown out all the Coachella <laughs> photos that are coming through Instagram. But Coach Hashtag Crapchella23. Crapchella! I encourage each one of you to go fuck a married person in some sense. Yeah. Listen, I mean, Coachella has a special place in the history of Vanderpump Rules. It's where Tom Sandoval spent $40,000 on his future mistress's engagement party. It's also this season where it was rumored that Raquel made out with Tom Schwartz, who then later became Brock Tom, who then later became... That's a lot of Tom, Dick, and Harry's in that girl's life. And listen, a lot. as a person with a lot of them, I'm not slut-shaming. Here's what I'm saying. 
work on your Rolodex. Make, work on your entrance and your exits. You know what I yeah. mean? You can't be sleeping around all willy-nilly. You got to have this shit planned out. And not, we live in the time of iCal, okay? And Google Calendar. Plan your shit out, ma'am. No, but it's really awesome being back here in Philadelphia. You guys are always an amazing crowd. Love being here. This is our biggest Philadelphia show we've ever had, actually. I think it's... It might be our biggest show of the tour so far. And so, like, I am, like... We're so excited. Philadelphia gives us so fucking much. I mean, the cream cheese alone, you guys <laughs> should have a... Seriously. I want a fucking bell made out of cream cheese. Try and crack that bitch. We were, we were in uh, Toronto last night, and they are so lovely, and they are so nice. People, you know, Canada is so nice. But now we're in Philadelphia. Yeah, Let we me came out of there feeling so warm. I mean, they really treated us so well. And I said, I cannot wait to see a bunch of crazy people with 40s in their sports yeah. bras. I'm like, she I want to... She a 40, yes, girl, yes. I want to go to a place where I'll get yelled at for simply saying two words. Taylor Ham. <laughs> you know, this That's is That's next I on Raquel's list, Taylor Ham. This is a VPR recap, so it's a night of a thousand boos. So we're going to start it off with the ham. You know what? Okay. The country is divided on so many things, so let's all come together, much like Tom and Raquel, and appreciate this moment in pop culture history, because this is truly one of the most surreal things that we've ever had to do as podcasters, which is that we are recapping a show that is telling us one narrative, and we're responding to that narrative while being fully aware of another narrative that's happening in real life. So it's funky and it's weird, but you know what? You know what? That's what we're here for, okay? It's going to be a lot like watching one of those National Geographic shows. Yeah. Where you know that shit was wrong, because now it's 2023. Right. But in order to get through the show, you have to say, well, that was the 1800s. They didn't know any better then. Yeah. That's what we're about to embark on. So just buckle your fucking seatbelts, okay? It's going to be wild. And if you need to boo somebody, he's right here. So yeah. feel free. I'll take all the heat for all the, all the weird takes. <laughs> I'm kidding with you. Okay. You ready, my darling? Oh, and Excuse by the way, this me. is a supersized episode. Supersized. Which is a fucking blessing uh, as an audience, but it's not a blessing to the husbands and people who were dragged here by their friends. Yes. Sir, 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 sir. That's so adorable that you're not, you're not a Bravo fan because you totally look like one. So <laughs> I know. Let me just tell you, you are dressed like well one. Dressed. You are ready to be one of us. So consider this your conversion, bitch. And by the way... As long as we're looking out here on the audience, I see one of our super premium sponsors here, Miss Hava Nagila Weber. Hava. Welcome. Thank you for always being a light in my menorah. <laughs> All right. Previously on Vanderpump Rules. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? I don't care. What do you want to do? Let's just stay here, maybe. Let's just sit down someplace. Let's sit down. I don't want to drink, really. Vegas. You want to do... Hi. I'm Oliver. Oh. Hi. I'm going to squirt like a tube of toothpaste sat on by an elephant. Guys, I think he's like... Guys, I think he's, like, married with kids. No, no. He's separated, I think. What could go wrong? So, Raquel, if you want to make out with Oliver's, like, I totally don't even care. <laughs> Disengage, bitch. Disengage, the bitch. So, Greg... Less rich restaurateur. When are you going to open up your little restaurant thing? We're not ready. Five years. Whoa! Whoa! Quaggy, waggy. Have, have you?
Have you considered large planters that block the entryways and any pathways that people could be trying to move in your establishment? Oh, what about goat cheese balls but in the shape of empanadas with a purple light? Or a giant clock pendulum that swings back and forth, carrying an ex-music video star cooing Nicolay! My show! Um, my attraction to Schwartz definitely outweighs my desire to be friends with Katie. Mm. So, Raquel, if you really want to make out, like, I, I don't think I would... My... <laughs> well, I've been worried about bringing anyone around because I'm worried about Tom's feelings, and he does this, well, I don't care anymore. I'm finding myself the most Al Yankovic-looking motherfucker I can find. And I'm fucking him right on the starry night table at Shorts and Sandy's, and I'm going to wear a wicker basket beret while I do it. And scene. And scene, previously. So the episode after that opens up. We're at Sheena's apartment. And at, Marina Del Rey. Yeah. It's a small apartment. Marina Del Rey now. Yeah. We got... We, now that we have a baby, we want to have a st we want to have an apartment that has like a little staircase in every corner. So, <laughs> notice they have like a little balcony in their kitchen. I just want lots of hallways. The baby's first word needs to be corner, corner, corner. So they're writing uh, thank you notes for their wedding. And shocker, Brock doesn't know how to write. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> Literally does not know how to write. I wrote Brock is writing thank you cards. Brock doesn't know how to write. And then the scene unfolded. Brock doesn't know how to write. Like, yeah. he literally does not know how to write his own name. Uh, hey, Brock. That, like, doesn't even say Brock Davies. That's, like, not even legible. Are you vlogging this? <laughs> He's like, it says B, and then it says Rock. <laughs> and she's like, you do you, bro. He's literally putting little rocks in the, in the thank you notes. God bless his heart. Isn't he cute with his haircut? Have you guys seen his haircut? It's very oh cute. God bless it. I don't even need you to pay for your kids at this point. You paid fantastic Sam's. You're forgiven. So then we go over to James and Allie's apartment, and James is like, oh my God, my back still hurts from that plane. Must have been sitting in a seat that a fat person was sitting in before. A fat slut. Fat slut scene. It was such a long DJ session, coach. But at least now I'm interplaning, aren't I? Interplaning, old DJ. I played on four airlines now. Ali's like, have you talked to Schwartz? He's like, oh yeah, it's a bit weird. I mean, I can, I can picture, I can picture Schwartz and Raquel continuing to date. I can totally see that, you know. She's like, you really, you really think that that Tom is the one you really see right now? So you really think? That guy who looks like he's got a bloodborne illness <laughs> and a really thin, dry upper lip the, the, is get sorry, but you know it's true. I mean, he's literally 40 and wears PJs out, so I just don't really see that happening. Allie, I'm sorry, but fuck you, eh? I'm a lot older than that wearing PJs at, and I can still get a little. Meanwhile. Let's not, let's not debase the, the older people in PJ set. I earned those fucking PJs. Meanwhile, Lala shows up at Schwartz's house. Uh, I heard something about PJs. <laughs> ah. So uh, then we go to Charlie and Raquel, who are like the new generation of this show, you know? And you can tell because they're working on their content in the park. Yeah, it's content day, guys. It's content day in the park, guys. Let's, let's get together and work on some ditch con. Yeah. That one's cute, Raquel. That was so cute. I love that look of it. Raquel is doing like these poses. She just looks like, like all the palm trees. It's like Where's Waldo, but palm tree version. Raquel's just in her... 
you know, mom jeans, which are back in, God knows why, but God bless the youth, you know? The children are our future. But she's in her mom jeans, and she's just, like, posing really bad, and badly. And Charlie's like, oh, my God, this is such an amazing, awkward space. Maybe back up a bit. Are we going to use these for a new Hinge profile? Do it on a boogie board. You're on a boogie board right now. <laughs> and Raquel's like... You're on an elephant. You're on safari, right? <laughs> oh, Raquel, I just looked. You aged out of content creation. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Just aged out of DigCon. I'm sorry. Just aged out. <laughs> so, then we have, so then we have uh, Schwartz making food for, what, for his dogs, and there's like a knock at the door, and it's Katie. And Oh, my God. And we didn't even... Go ahead, give it to her. Yeah, give her, give it to her. Give Listen, her your Katie love. Take your side. Cheer, cheer for who you want to cheer for. Do it, you know? Yes. We're, I believe in big freedom. Tent. We have a big tent here, okay? I believe in freedom. Um, so Schwartz is doing that baby voice thing he does. Um, he's like, oh, my God, Peaches McGee. Are you so sad? Because you got to go to mama's. I love, that he's, <laughs> I love that he's even a terrible father to dogs. Just talking about... <laughs> talking, just talking shit about their mother. Like, I know you're so sad you have to go see your mama, huh? <laughs> just if she tries on another beret, say, please, no. No more. Sheena calls up. Hi, I just want to let you guys know that both those dogs are also not at the, allowed at the preferred club pool access. But they can come to the pre-wedding and the post-wedding and possibly the brunch. After the bacon is served. Only after the bacon is served. Though. So uh, sh- th- this is actually, I feel like, one of Katie's greatest moments. Because Schwartz is like, oh, I'm so stressed out today. I had to put slippers on. And we don't have kitchen staff. And yes, we're supposed to open up this week. And she goes, sounds awful. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. It's all, I, it's all I wanted. It's all I wanted. It's all I wanted! Oh. And then he's left alone, and he's like, Oh, <laughs> it is awful. Oh, if a tree manipulates in a forest and no one's there to be manipulated, did it still manipulate? So then he calls uh, Sandoval, who's douchily sitting cross-legged in parachute pants. And the diary room session. And Sandoval's like, oh, dude, Schwartz is sexing. Oh, he's calling me. Can I, go? Can I take this? Can I take this? <laughs> They're like, sure. They're like, we arranged it. So, yes, please take it. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, we had a whole scene of Katie getting run over and then backed up over for about 20 minutes. But she left. So we're going <laughs> to fill it with this. <laughs> So Schwartz is like, oh, hi, hi, Sandoval. I'm just calling you because Katie just left right away. And like, usually when we exchange the dogs, like we kick it for a bit. Not the dogs. We don't kick the dogs. We just kick it. And then I like make her feel bad about herself. And then I'm like, oh, sorry, but you're still great. I love you. So anyway, and if she has sushi, I'll maybe eat some of it that I didn't pay for. So now what? Like, she's just coming and like doing the grab and go. He's like, yeah, like wieners in a 7-Eleven roller oven. <sighs> I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. How are the editors not cutting back? I don't care if this needs to be a 10-hour episode. I need a cutback. <laughs> yeah. I don't even care what he said to Katie. You don't go up to someone's table and take a piece of sushi, you, you do fucker. Not. You'll die in my presence. I would have liked one slow-mo shot and like they were like and they're like blue and white with a pink highlight thing that they do. Just him taking the sushi and pulling it back. I would have been like, the episode's done. I have seen Still enough. Still a face covered in Raquel lip smackers, motherfucker. So Sandoval, of course, is like, bro, really, don't see what you did wrong. You're like a single guy who got broken up with. I mean, we're in Mexico. That's what, like, somewhat good-looking people do in Mexico. It's not like it's not like you're homely in Mexico making out with somebody. Yeah, I love Sandoval saying, dude, it's just like you were both single, as if being single or not single seems to matter to Sandoval. Uh, Pitchforks! 
so Schwartz is like, yeah, we were in Mexico. We were living La Vida Loca, right? So, Please don't invoke Ricky, <laughs> sir. You can't pull off a Ricky Martin reference, sir. Please don't. <laughs> please, please. So then uh, Schwartz has a great defense of himself. He says, oh, I may be a little off, but my approximation, Katie might be blowing this like way more out of proportion than anything in the history of our relationship. I mean, she's acting like I cheated on her. I mean, she's more upset than when I actually did cheat on her. You know, just... When you're defending yourself, what you want to do is this guy's leave such a pig. stuff behind. So he's like, yeah, she could do whatever she wants, and I would totally support her. Like, Tom, if you and Katie got married next week, put a lie detector on me over a blazer so you know it's really <laughs> working. I would fully support it. But I know you would never do something as morally bankrupt as that, right? Well, it's funny you say that because uh, Punky Brewster berets and pattern tats have started turning me on, bro. So <laughs> let's get this going. So back to the park where Ansel Adams is doing a session. Charlie goes, one of my favorite lines in Vanderpump Rules because of like what it's about and also its resignation. She goes, okay, content day. Well, we tried. We tried. <laughs> They've already given up on content day. Well, because they're in that park by the Grove. It's like dog shit and heat. That's all I there know. is. And um, she's like, we tried. Well, next time we should do it inside. <laughs> so Katie invited me to brunch. And Goals. <laughs> I just Goals. like that. It's like that. Let's go, take, let's go take modeling Instagram content pictures in 100 degree weather in mom jeans. Like, good plan. Do people do this in Philadelphia, by the way? Because it's all over L.A. Do, do what? What's your question? Just like you walk around in LA and there's always like someone standing, like going, hmm. Oh, doing your content? Oh, come on, you guys do content. Uh huh. Ben just got this cookbook by um, a, a lady in Minnesota and it's like all this crazy shit. He'll That's tell the you about it. Thing. That's his story to tell. I don't want to steal it from <laughs> That's him. That's my journey to, to That's take his you journey. on. But at one point, she's like, oh, yeah, they called me to the Facebook headquarters offices, and I was telling them, you know, like, enchiladas could be made with macaroni, you know? And we were like, even in Minnesota, you know this lady is doing content shots with her macaroni. Like, look. <laughs> yeah, you know, we tried. Next time, let's do this inside, <laughs> right? I'm sure there's someone here who's done some Wawa influencing, right? I would well, we've it. all It'd been be to wa 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 while we were under the influence, for sure, <laughs> taking stupid selfies. I've been with some of you. Commercials. Here comes one right now. HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime this spring by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy-to-prepare recipes right to your door. Skip the checkout lines and get outside in the warmer weather because HelloFresh has dinner covered. Good food is too precious to waste. HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients cut down on your food waste by at least 23% compared to grocery shopping, which is good for your wallet and the planet. Spend less time in the kitchen with quick and easy meals like HelloFresh's fast and fresh pineapple chicken tacos or falafel power bowls ready in 15 minutes or less. No worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. And whoever's been listening to this show, you, you, in your car right now, for a very long time, know that we love HelloFresh. Yeah, we've. I mean, we have been talking about HelloFresh for years, and there's a reason why, because they do good stuff, okay? Hello, how many times have I talked about how HelloFresh has revolutionized the way I cook pork chops? Go to HelloFresh.com slash Crappens50 and use code Crappens50 for 50% off, plus your first box ships for free. That's HelloFresh.com slash Crappens50. Use Code Crappens50 for 50% off, plus your first box ships free. America's number one meal kit. It's officially Earth Month. And one of my favorite ways to show the planet some love is by shopping sustainably, specifically on TheRealReal.com. The Real Real is the largest and most trusted source for luxury consignment. You'll find everything from Gucci, Prada, and Hermes to Ghani, Staud, and so much more. All for up to 90% off retail. 
So far, the real real has kept over 30 million items in circulation and out of landfills. While saving 3.5 billion liters of water and over 66,000 metric tons of carbon. So, shopping secondhand is one of the easiest and most fun ways to ring in Earth Month. Instead of purchasing something new, do the Earth a favor this month by shopping on therealreal.com. And use our code CRAPINS for 20% off your next order. That's therealreal.com, code CRAPINS for 20% off at checkout. Terms apply. So Charlie is like, so Katie invited me to brunch because we're still pretending to be friends. And I was just like really disappointed with the information I was given, uh, which is cool because I don't know if anyone's ever given Charlie any information before. Also, I don't think Katie's ever done anything with Charlie ever before, which is really funny that Katie's like working it, you know? So Katie did. We see this clip of Katie going, we were in Lala's room, and then Sheena calls her. Like Katie's eyebrow were one's here and then one's here like a cart. I love her confused. Like she just doesn't understand. She's just trying to figure out a mystery. So she's like, we were in Lala's. I'm sorry, I don't know if my Botox is letting me do it. I never know. So I had to... By the way, I'd like to thank Jesus for creating Botox on the eighth day. Glad he took that extra day. God bless it. Uh, Sorry, I got everybody riled up with Botox. Everyone's standing up like, girl, is mine moving? Is mine moving? Is mine moving? So uh, Katie is sitting her down. She's like, yeah, we were in Lala's room. And then Sheena calls her. And she's like, did you see that Raquel and Tom were making out? And everyone was cheering. That was terrible for you. I totally understand. But also be mad at literally everybody because everybody was happy about that in that moment, okay? Yell it. Be fair. Yeah. So, so, Charlie's, so Charlie's like, um, I think it's like distasteful what happened at Sheena's wedding with Tom and that was Katie's anniversary weekend for her wedding and Ra- Rachel. I just said it, Rachel. I said my first <laughs> organic Rachel. I'm transitioning out of Raquel, guys. She goes... She goes, I'm not thinking about their anniversary, but to be fair, I actually don't really think in general. But like, (laughs) they're not together anymore. And she also chose to go on this trip when she wasn't invited, and she knew what she she was getting herself into. Yeah, and she's uh, she's like, well, I'm just like, if I'm gonna be your friend, I'm gonna be honest, but I'm gonna also like tell you the truth. I was like, that's so nice, Charlie, thank you. (laughs) And she's like, that wasn't cool. And Raquel's like, well, if you're wondering if I'm going to, like, be dating, like, um, Oliver, like, no. And she goes, good. That's a good idea. And then Raquel goes, yeah, I mean, if Schwartz showed any interest, I'd be down to date him. But, like, I'm not trying to be, like, Debbie Desperado over here or anything. Debbie Desperado calls up. Hi, it's Debbie Desperado. Hey. Hey, so I was just coming back from my Facebook meeting, and uh, listen, I know my name's Debbie Desperado, but even I didn't go on a date with Peter, so anyway, have a great day. Hi. Have a great day, okay? Yeah. Hi, it's Debbie Desperado. you can try as many of those losers as you want, but you know, a whole crew of Vanderpump Rules cast does not a hot dish make, okay, ma'am? And By the way, Debbie Desperado already has an at, bitch. It's me. Yeah, I'd like to also say that I can put macaroni enchiladas, because guess what? My last name's Desperado, okay? It's in my heritage. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just want to say... <laughs> don't cancel Debbie Desperado, guys. Um, I just want to say... All Debbie wanted to do was give us more potatoes and cheese, and look how we're treating her. <laughs> Canceling her ass in Philadelphia. I no, just going. It's fun when we go through these notes because you realize things. It's funny hearing Raquel saying, "Oh, you know, Katie wasn't invited. She knew what she was getting herself into." So I'm just gonna assume when we hear the pleas of guys, please, this has been really hard on me. Please, can you guys like stop being so mean to me? I'm like, I feel so bad about what I did, with, you know, to Ariana. Are we gonna remember this line? She knew what she was getting herself into. Mm. I'm just wondering, just asking. I just. So, Schwartz and Sandy um, at work looking at Schwartz's phone. Okay, at work. Okay, all they literally do is come into this restaurant and just sit in the booth. 
Yes. We've at least seen Tom Schwartz move like one tub of some kind of ass juice to it, like caterpillar ass juice or whatever they mix in that shit, yeah. to another counter. Otherwise, <laughs> they sit in the same booth at all times, right? So we see them there, and he's scrolling through his phone, and he's like, Oh, look at these photos I posted at the wedding. Someone posted a photo from the wedding, and it says, come on, bro, did you hit that shit? And it's about Raquel. Can you believe it? <laughs> like, was it a photo of you making out in the middle of the fucking pool, under the spotlight, <laughs> in the floating table? So then Schwartz says, oh, I have a newfound sense of optimism and determination. Ah, What? <laughs> He puts on a slipper once in his life and suddenly the world is his oyster. He's like, I know we're not going to open when we're supposed to open. And like, it fucking hurts, but you know, it's a tough, jagged little pill to, uh, oh my God, what's the word? Losing the optimism. Swallow. Oh, thanks for saving me. So then Brett comes in like, hi. Hi. Everything's great. How are we? How was our trip? How was your non-working trip? How was it? Did you have a yeah. good time at the trip? When you weren't yeah. here working? That was fine. I was here working was on great. the POS system. That yeah. was great. Yeah, you want to make a menu? Yeah, yeah. you didn't miss anything. Just uh, our booth maker forgot how to work booths and yeah. broke and quit. And no booth. He came in. He cut out pieces for the booth. Then the pieces didn't fit together. Then the machine broke. And then guess what? He quit. That was fine. Yeah. And then the chef, he quit, so we tried to hire the pieces of wood that were supposed to be the booth to be the chef. And they didn't like that, and then we got haunted by a ghost, and that was real weird. Everything's been fine. And then Sandoval's like, well, did you just say, like, bro, we'll throw you some more money? He's like, absolutely fucking not. The guy, the guy who just took, two, like, his mother's retirement savings and the uh, a mortgage on the house of the woman he's currently cheating on this fucker yes just throw more money at it dude like what do we actually need besides kitchen staff what else do we need i mean like okay more led lights okay how about that what about like a giant piranha like a giant piranha skeleton that made of q-tips that we could put on the wall could we do that all we need is a kitchen staff you know it's a restaurant thank god there's only one thing we need Someone to cook food. So, uh, yeah, I felt like I was really pushed into the kitchen manager. Yeah, I was not comfortable uh, hiring him. Yeah, so I'm going to let, I let him go, and I had him uh, come back to me, uh, some per, some per, to, whatever, I'm going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I fired the fucker. He's like, the dishes fell short, he's not the right fit for us, he's gone. And Sandoval's, we have to open, bro, we have to fucking open, bro. Hey, hey, saying we have to open is utterly pointless words, okay? Dude, I know, but if we don't open, we are fucked! <laughs> if we have to serve goddamn potato chips out there, we got to do it, otherwise we lose uh, this place! Uh. Okay, uh... Dude, we are a million dollars in, okay? I could lose my fucking house, my mom's retirement, Brett goes and gets another job, Greg turns the keys into the landlord, and then it's like, like, they don't have these kind of fucking stakes. Also, we just don't have stakes here. We, no, we also, another our, thing our, we don't have, Our, our refrigerator steaks. broke, yeah. None of us have steaks, no steaks, actually. You worrying about whether we serve fresh fucking toasted raviolis is irrelevant! And Brett's like, um, not worried about the raviolis, okay? The guy literally couldn't make anything. Brett, you were so close to being iconic. It's not, I'm not worried about the raviolis. It's, it's not about the pasta. There you go. So close, Brett. But I'm on your side, because you don't deserve any of this. Rick but I'm paying for it. OK, Karen, OK. So Sandoval's like, we have to open the doors. I'm saying we have to. I mean, this guy literally just keeps walking off. You know, it's Tom yeah. Sandoval. So he's telling us, I love Rhett, but at this, at this point, perfectionism is death. This is Tom Sandoval's behind the music, by the way, if right. he ever gets one. 
This quote. As long as we're a B plus, that's fine. I mean, performers that like perform live, they're stoked if they're a B plus. Nobody gets to perform even at a B plus. Yeah. I, I can't believe his music career never took off. That's so weird. That explains a lot about your confidence in being the lead singer of a band when you can't hit half the notes you attempt. You fucking try hard. You know, when I look at like Beyonce or Lady Gaga, she I'm always like, that's why that's why they call her B. Yeah, I'm like, guys, hello, where's your A plus game? Come on now. <laughs> so Schwartz is like, listen, we're frustrated. Okay, some of us had to put on slippers today, and. I almost threw myself over a bridge for this project. I was like, whoa, did anyone else catch that? He almost, it's a wonderful life, okay? Oh, God, that would be the saddest it's a wonderful life ever. It would ever. be. It would be literally just everything we've seen. <laughs> but in black and white. Um, I wish we could do a whole pool. It's a Wonderful Life for Tom Schwartz, but it's a 19-hour show today, so we'll have to hold that till next week. <laughs> so then we go to Ariana and Tom's house, which at this point just feels like a vortex of sadness. Like, every time we go there, I'm it's like, so uh, awkward. Because it's not only awkward because you know what's going on, it's also so sad because you know there's those Philips Hue, like, tube lights behind all of those couches just waiting yep. to sap electricity, you know? Like, nothing's going well in this house. So Ariana is in the process of starting to make a sandwich. And, you know, I'm totally in favor of the sandwich shop. I think it's a super cute idea. And um, I'm excited for them to make their first actual sandwich on the show because we haven't actually seen the sandwiches yet. So they're getting close to it on this episode. And I, don't know that I, trust, I don't know that I trust a person who doesn't eat bread to make me a sandwich. I'm just going to say it, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that. So, uh, like, maybe a meat shop. Just do that. Like, do a protein and fingernail like shop. Butcher, That's all shop. you're eating. We all fucking know it. Yeah. You look too amazing to sit around eating sandwiches. We all fucking know it, okay? Open a horse shop. <laughs> That's what I say. Sell some horse trapper keepers. <laughs> okay, so... It's very uh, French. <laughs> it's very Speaking of bit very French, actually... Oh, my God. Fresh from the Champs-Élysées... Katie. <laughs> Girl. Katie. <laughs> help us help you. Katie looks like she was going to like a German Scheiße shop, you know, whatever. She's wearing a leather beret, okay, a sports bra. And it looks like she had a towel on over her sports bra and people were just like shooting paint pellets at her on the way to what the fuck are you wearing katie get some help damn this is your this is your season this is your queen season i do better i liked it i felt like it was like a, a lovely ode to samuel l jackson so so she shows up and she has this like very whimsical picnic basket it's like this big wicker basket it's on her like it's on her arm and she's like she has she has, she's brought cheeses for her sandwich, tr you know, tasting, and this beautiful basket, and she opens it up, and it's all just, like, basic supermarket cheese in there. I think I know what kind of sandwich Katie likes. It's a whole, it's a bag this big of cheese. It's this big. This, it's a huge bag of cheese, okay? And the first one she pulls out, she's like, oh, my God, you guys, I was looking at cheese, and I found this one. It's espresso cheese. What? <laughs> what kind of sandwich are you going to make with espresso cheese? Get the fuck out of this house, ma'am, and take a Philips Hue with you. Get out. Guys, I got a lima bean brie. Is anyone interested? <laughs> I got a Mentos goat cheese, you guys. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Katie was saying how she dropped by Tom's and saw him for like four seconds. And Sandoval's like, um, so like, are you guys like not friends anymore because of him and Raquel making out? I'm like, I think they're probably not friends because of like 12 years of massive disrespect on Tom Schwartz's part, but that's okay too. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons they could not be friends. It could have been a variety of reasons, really. Yeah. 
And she's like, um, well, yeah. And he goes, well, I don't think that was like really a big deal, like making out in a pool, like they're both hot. They're just two single, decent-looking people, like in Mexico, decide to make out. Like, how do you have not? How do you have two decent people don't make out? It doesn't even make sense, dude. It reminds me of that uh, Real Housewives of New York, where Bethany was trying to set somebody up. Who was it? Like the young blonde. Who was it? What's the matter? And what's going on? Was it uh, uh, Tinsley? Tinsley. Or she was trying to set someone up, and Kristen? she's like, oh, you know what, you know what, like, she's blonde, she's thin, she's fine, she's young, she's hot, and I know another guy, and he's young, and he's hot, and he's thin, too. So just put them together. That's what they do. People like that, they just go together like that. Yeah. They just start fucking. They're like two little cheetah brands, and you know what, they just get together and make one big cheetah brand. <laughs> By the way, when we named it the Cheetah Brand Tour, we really did not expect how much you guys, seriously. Leaning into that name. That was some kismet right there. Oh, God, all the ways this horrible affair has worked out in my favor. Ooh! (laughs) Um, So Katie's like, well, we've talked about it like a hundred times, and he's told me nothing's going to happen, and he's not interested in her. and And he's like, well, people change their mind, Katie. And Katie's like, but it's the aftermath, which is a very traumatic concept for Raquel because oh, ice cream socials and aftermath. So that's oh. so mean. I just took a <laughs> I just took a math dig at her. That's some aftermath. <laughs> Raquel's in the fetal position at home. Like I never, another aftermath. I, I never wasn't got invited to, to. I never got to go to ice cream social uh. aftermath. Um, so and anyway. Katie's like, oh, whatever, she's a whore. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now here's a moment where, back in time, we don't know that yet. Right now all we know is that she's made out with Tom. Does that really make someone a whore, Katie? But I do love Katie's uh, dedication. No, it does not, ma'am. No, it does not, <laughs> ma'am. Okay? <laughs> Uh, but I do love Daddy. I will admit I am similar to Katie in that way because I can't just be like, well, I didn't appreciate it. I'm the same way. I'm like, she's the whore. That's it. I'm like, uh, hi, my Domino's is late. We don't have a Domino's order for you, sir. You fucking whore. Fuck you. So Ariana, who's watching Katie and Sandoval going back and forth, poor Ariana. I mean, she's just like, She's like, listen, she's not a whore. She doesn't get paid by anyone to do anything. (laughs) Tom's checking his wallet, like. (laughs) Yep. Still there, so. Katie's like, well, then she should be because she's acting like one. And I'm like, well, that would be the first time that someone on Vanderpump Rules really nailed an acting job. Outside of Laura Lee. Outside of Laura Lee. And Vail. (laughs) And Vail. She's like. I mean, Tom also has a habit of sticking his tongue where it doesn't belong. He did it like four times when we were together, so that shouldn't be this shocking or surprising to me, I guess. I mean, it shouldn't be, but you also have a habit of putting hats where they don't belong, okay? I'm not saying, I'm not saying you're less right than him. I'm just saying there are things we can all work on here. <laughs> Espresso so, cheese, my... Basically, Katie's, just, Katie's like, listen, it just it feels like disrespect. Uh, yeah. which is, you know, it's good. You know, she should also uh, see all the other terrible things that Tom Schwartz has done to her over the years. Am I right? So she's like, I don't think he'd like it if I'd started jumping on all his friends' peens. <laughs> she's like, I think I've been pretty respectful in my dealings. Again, editors, how did you not clip right to, I think you're pathetic, I think you're a drunk, and I think you're a loser. <laughs> Also, it's totally not fair that because Katie really can't have good revenge, you know. You know, uh, Schwartz makes out with someone in the group, and Katie really can't. Like, what are Katie's options? You know, like Schwartz has all these hot, all these hot girls on the cast, and what is what is what does Katie have to, to revenge? Schwartz, with? that's it. That's all she's, she's got. got. Like, all the other guys Peter, are with somebody. You got Guillermo, Peter Schwartz, Guillermo, Chef Joe. It's not fair. Yeah. So Sandoval uh, is like, oh, what? So he's not allowed to have any other, like, friends? Because, like, Joe came to stay with him for three weeks. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Joe. Joe In the future, 
We know Joe from being a crazy, possibly cracked out person at a Tom Sandoval show dancing like this. Okay? But we don't know that yet. For, so for now, all we know is that Joe is just a roommate of Tom's. And then we find out, she called, Joe called me up like crying, saying, Katie's calling me and leaving me messages. <laughs> you fucking whore. <laughs> <laughs> so then Katie tells us, Katie gives us some more insight on Joe. She goes, Joe was literally Kristen Doty's crazy friend. And if you're Kristen Doty's crazy friend, that says a lot. And then... <laughs> Yes. And then, they t just as evidence of how crazy Joe is, we then see the following clip. Joe walking out the door going, see you later. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, she's like, I'm going to walk the dogs now. Damn, crazy. And Schwartz is like, I fucking love you, Joe. And she's like, love you too, man. Damn, back. wow. Fucking insane. <laughs> insane, that Joe. Katie's like, the last text Joe sent me when we announced our divorce said she will always love and respect me and the fact that she moved in with my ex two seconds later, yeah, she's that kind of bitch. She's the sort of bitch that when she walks out a door, she opens the door and closes it behind her. Crazy! She's that kind of bitch that when she needs somewhere to stay, she finds someone who needs a roommate. That <laughs> kind of bitch. <laughs> Here comes one right now. When one thinks of Italy, they can't help but think of the fashion, the culture, the food, the storied history, and of course, the shopping. Guess what? There's a new Italian lingerie brand who recently partnered up with Jennifer Lopez that is making gorgeous fabrics, colorful silks, and delicate lace. I gifted my sister and my nieces into Missimi, and they absolutely love this stuff. My sister said it's the most beautiful she's ever felt while being comfortable, which, hey, I mean, that's saying something. It's very rare that beauty and comfort intertwine. But the name can be a bit challenging, Intimacy, intermissy, inter intermississippi. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's intimissimi, the art of Italian lingerie. Check it out at intimissimi.com slash JLo. So Katie's basically like, listen, I made a request and I said, if you want to go fucking all my friends, then you don't have my friendship. And if you can't understand that, then may God have mercy on your soul and pray that no one does that to you. She says that to Tom Sandoval. And then there's that long, sad shot of Ariana. And I think we all went, oh, God, this is just going to keep getting worse and worse, won't it? Yeah, because it was a really long shot right in Ariana's face. They were like, I hope nothing, I hope nobody ever does this to you. And then the cameraman was like, Ariana's like, uh... Is this espresso cheese? <laughs> <laughs> um, For ten minutes, Ariana's just like, awkward. So then, um, we're at See You Next Tuesday with tens of people. That's doing really well, after all these years. There James was like five the... people that they just repeated in Final Cut and pasted on top of each other. Yeah. I was like, so you faked it to make it look like there were 15 people here? Wow. So James is on the, he's, you know, doing his thing at the pizza oven, you know, playing CDs and everything. Playing his, playing his pizza, playing his thin crust. And, and Lisa, Lisa comes in and there's a, there's a new hostess. She's like, hello, how are you, nameless wonder? Hello, new future human trafficking victim, darling. No chewing gum on the floor, I can see it. I can see everything that goes into your mouth and don't think I'm not counting the change later. The last... You know she's trafficking out of these restaurants, right? I've been saying this for years and I'm just waiting to be proven right. There's never the same person there. Hi, Richie. There's never the same fucking person there. Every time you go, it's some new beautiful person. And the next time you see them, they're like a black and white Xerox on a pole somewhere in West Hollywood. I'm... See something, say something. I'm doing it. I'm just trying to save people. 
Darling, darling, you should not be chewing gum. This is a classy establishment. Anyway, how is Cut Mia's Fitness like, Night going? Yeah. Mia's like, you're right, I'll spit it out now. Oh, that attitude will come in handy in this profession, darling. You'll be just fine. Clean the menus. I love a nice long groan that goes from that yeah. side all the way to that side. Yeah. It's like, it's rolls. It's a roll. It's sort of like wafts over you like a summer breeze. It's a Jill Zarin groan, like a. Hi. So James is, you know, he's in full on. Look at all these fat sluts. Look at all these fat sluts. Oh, Lisa, you look beautiful. He always does that. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's the lighting, surely, darling. Not any of the stem cells I've already taken from Mia. <laughs> you just see Mia, the hostess, doubled over like, ah, what happened to me? <laughs> so she's like, oh, you seem very calm and mature, which is not true. And he's literally like coked up out of his mind. and be like, oh, 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 oh fast, slut. So he's like, oh, yeah, I just got back from Mexico and a lot happened. Schwartz was making out with Raquel. I was like, wow, you got right to it. He gets right to it. They're all such tattletales. I love it. So then we go to Schwartz and Sandy. They're sitting at a booth at See You Next Tuesday. And we get to see my favorite thing, people waiting tables at Sir. I love watching it. It's always been the funniest things. So Raquel goes up and she's like, hey, guys. You had the lasagna. I don't know why, but I rewound that three times. Yeah. I've had it so fucking funny. Well, it was the first time she actually didn't pronounce the G, so we were all proud of her. It was a It's Patagonian toothfish, darling. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone orders pap Papardelli, and I'm just impressed that no one's like, um, someone wants to know whose dad owns a deli. <laughs> and do they use espresso cheese yet? <laughs> so, uh, actually, that's a Charlie waiting table scene, which is also really good. Oh, I'm Charlie sorry. actually works there. You know, Charlie's, there's always one person a season that actually works at Sir, and that's Charlie right now. Yeah. Like, she doesn't get paid shit. We know. I have Twitter. She's so, trying to get out of there. I mean, she did go to that Gwen Stefani, uh, like, cosmetic okay. brand uh, yeah. audition that unfortunately didn't pan out. Sorry. Yeah, but Charlie really works here, and you can tell she hustles, because she's like, oh, hey, a guy goes, we'll do the popper deli, and she goes, yeah, do it, and the sweet corn ravioli. Am I right? Because that's really good. <laughs> and I used to be a non-pasta person. I've really grown on this show, okay? <laughs> so two of the poppers and two of the corn ash, okay, and a pump teeny. Be right back. <laughs> Supersize it. Damn, Charlie. So um, so Lisa's still talking to James, and she's like, oh, so is it strange? Is it strange with Raquel and Tom Schwartz making out? I think you're a bit jealous. And James, he's so chill. He's so chill. He goes, I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous. That's all I want to use. Jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm like, what does everyone get understand? I don't even care about Raquel, stupid slut. Like, she could be, be like her. fucking sweaty Peter after she like died. a six hours. Uh, We're six in an obituary. I'm in stupid. We're in a new song. It's Raquel. an obituary for Raquel. I don't even care about her. Bye bye, I don't care. dumb I don't like slut. Her. Stupid dumb slut. Never, never knew okay. what. Good luck. She Good luck had. doing things without me, stupid <laughs> slut. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> not jealous. So. <laughs> Oh, James. He's like, when is everyone going to understand? I don't care about Raquel. All right, she makes out with sweaty pizza after a six-hour shift, all right? <laughs> and then she'll move on to fucking buzz button over there. All right? Buzz button. The buzz button. <laughs> Dude, you have a buzz button. Do you guys remember button? what the buzz button is? That's Dude. what Tom Sandoval at uh, Tom Tom. He's like, well, this is a drink you have, but first you gotta eat this buzz button. And it's like the center of some kind of flower that numbs your teeth. It's poison. And then supposedly when you drink the rest of the drink, it makes your mouth dance or something. No, no, what it does is uh, when you eat the buzz button, it makes the flavor of the drink taste the exact opposite, which is always what I look for when I order something. Hi, I'd like to order something. And then I want to taste the exact opposite of what I ordered. Thanks. It's like in Harry Potter where they purposely get jelly beans that could possibly taste like dog poop. You know? Yeah. I so, love James holding the buzz button. Because that's an old, that's like a deep cut that James yeah, has been carrying around since the opening of Tom Tom four years ago. He's yeah. like, you know what? Fuck this buzz button, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm going to get him one day. 
<laughs> so, um, so then Schwartz is having another existential crisis. Just when he was feeling optimistic about things. Oh, I have to relearn how to communicate. I'm not good with words. I usually love words. Like, you're a regular Lin-Manuel Miranda over there. Yeah, seriously. I want to be in the room where... Where... Oh. How's that song go? So, uh, Sandoval's like, yeah, I remember. You used to be really good with words, dude. I so, used to have a brain. It wasn't when this show started. <laughs> we haven't seen it. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's not there. I'm just saying we haven't seen it. It's like the Lord. So, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on your faith. Gotta have it. So LVP comes in for her double kisses. She's like, hello, Paws. Come here. Come here. Two of the only stock I could never sell. How good to see you here, darling. You haven't been here in a while. What are you sniffing around here for? You ain't nothing but a hound dog. Mm. And uh, Schwartz is like, well. And then Raquel comes by and she's like, hi, would you guys like a drink? Lasagna. <laughs> she's like a Pokemon, like a Raquel approaches. So she appears out of nowhere. And then Lisa, I mean, Lisa's really on a surfboard. Raquel's waiting tables like she's on a boogie board. She's like, hey guys, just boogie board it over to you. Content day. So Lisa is, she is really on her A game in terms of manipulating situations, right? She's like, oh, Raquel. Have you two not seen each other since Mexico? George mm -hmm. is like, no, we haven't. Let's high five. Hey, Raquel, let's do our handshake. Remember, like the, ah, 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 down, down, baby, down by the roller coaster. Sweet, sweet, babe. I don't want to let you go. Chewy, chewy, coconut. Yeah, just friends. This isn't awkward. Right, Raquel? And Raquel's like, I mean, obviously, I don't see myself dating you or anything. And Sandoval goes, uh, uh, hey, I, I can't hear you. Hey, come here, Raquel. Come here. Literally sits Raquel in between the two Toms in a booth. The first, now we're really getting to see a sandwich. I know. You know what? Raquel has stolen a lot of things, and now is her personal perfect chance to steal the sandwich shop idea. <laughs> So at this And she could also call it Tom Tom. I mean, it would be amazing. <laughs> now, at, at, by the way, it's like very obvious at this point, right, <laughs> that the affair has begun because she's sitting there like the public, the public thing and the private thing and my boss right here. And she is she does not know what to do right now. Uh, and LVP's like, she's working! That'll cost you $27. Put it on the table, darling. So he pull, they pull her down on the couch, and Raquel's like, you're going to get me in trouble. I guess I already am in trouble. You just see Peter passing by like, Ugh. And meanwhile, Tom... Fucking starter pony. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, Tom is sitting next to Raquel like this. He's sort of like... He's got his arm kind of back here like this, and he's like, uh, Raquel, what's going on, Raquel? Hey. Dude. So Lisa's like, Tom, you've got a smile on your face. What's that about? And Raquel's like, have you talked to Katie? Has anyone talked to her? And Sandoval's like, yeah, I talked to her. She's not very happy. She called you a whore. He's like, oh, a whore. So Yeah, little fucking whore. She, she called me a whore? And she, of course, like, no one, I'm probably the only person I know that actually likes being called a whore. Like, who likes it? Nobody likes it. To me, that suggests, like, work. You know what I mean? But nobody likes being called a whore, and so she's upset, but Sandoval's doing the old Lifetime movie thing where you break her, and then you tell her you can fix her. Yeah. Like, are you crying now? Come to Daddy. Let Daddy <laughs> fix everything for you. Daddy doesn't think you're a whore. Sit on Daddy's lap. You fucking creep. 
Get your fucking white van and get the fuck out of here. So, Tom Sandoval, you know, listen, this guy has not taken enough shit. You know why? Because he's not here. He's off key somewhere. He hasn't been here. But to now see him actually in action, making a girl cry so that he can fix her with his teeny weeny. Fuck you, Tom Sandoval. Let's make it very clear today. What a jackass. Fucking A. It's good to be back in Philadelphia. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so Ra- Raquel, so. Raquel's like, so Raquel's like, oh, Katie called me a whore. And Lisa, Lisa's like, darling, Sandoval, why would you have to tell her that? He's like, she asked me, bro. She asked. No, she did not, no. Tom. Okay, also... Th- Calm down with the meth pipe or whatever you're doing, because this week, this week they showed pictures of that beef jerky ass with meth face and hair that looked like it had been through the desert. Have you seen that picture? I would normally say I'm worried for him, but I'm actually not. Well, I'm that wor- that will happen after you go on Howie Mandel's podcast. Oh my God! Oh, so, we'll get to that. Anyway, so. Uh, so Raquel's like, kissing people makes you a whore. I mean, I think a big thing that has been a roadblock for me have been roadblocks. They're, like, really hard to drive by. But also, like, being, trying to be liked by other people, like, there's people that you surround yourself with that either charge your battery or drain it, and I don't want to drain my battery, and I don't want to have that. Im- she is a robot. We knew it. Girl. You're answering your own question. All you need right now is battery power, okay? Also, Stop trying to make these men like you yeah. and find some fucking battery-powered solutions. Yeah. I, and get yourself together. Hey, I actually have a... You know, I understand that. Like, when you really want people to like you. Uh, one tip that I think is a really good one, I think it's a really easy one that we can all do, um, don't sleep with your best friend who happens to be the best person on the show and on Bravo, her long-term boyfriend. Just Who the way is by is now selling battery-operated toys. That's true. That would have solved this whole thing. Do you love uh, the full circle? We love, by the way, we, we, we spend so much time spewing all the hate and the hate and the hate. But the truth is that it's Ariana is thriving it, right now. Yes, Ariana is thriving. She's got a deal with Bloomingdale's. She's in a Lifetime movie, and she's got this hot new guy from Coachella. The first good thing to come out of Coachella. So we're very happy. It's like the quickest move on we've ever seen on Bravo, and I'm so excited for her because every time I open Instagram, people are like, oh! it's like, here's my video of how I feel about Ariana right now. And she's sobbing, and then you scroll down one post, and it's Ariana for Bloomingdale's and like a glamour dress, like. My eggs have been fertilized by Bloomingdale's. Well, and also in other news, Sheena uh, is going to be doing work for Blooming Onions. So, <laughs> hi, I'm Sheena, and I represent the Blooming Onion. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right you do. I make what? fun of it, but honestly, I would love that job. I would love to be a Blooming Onion influencer. <laughs> So Sandoval's like, yeah, she's like, you know, Schwartz doesn't need to go around fucking all our friends. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. And Raquel's like, but why would she assume that we're fucking? I don't know, Raquel. Maybe because you made out with him in front of everybody on purpose. It's just you're giving people the idea, you know? So then Sandoval's like, yeah, but I was like, that's not the case. Let me fix you, my broken little doll. (laughs) So she leaves. Raquel's like all upset. She's like, I'm putting this, this order for a lasagna mapolitan in the machine right now. I'm like, excuse me. She's boogie boarding off. Like, I'm going to protect my laptop there. Dude, a lot of emotions happening. Just kidding. <laughs> So Sandoval's like, oh, dude, I didn't anticipate Raquel being so upset about Katie calling her a whore. I mean, I thought she'd shrug it off. I, 
I definitely want her to know what people are saying about her. Raquel, a bastion of strength, who clearly would shrug off being called a whore. Yeah. This, this is so warped. How am I, like, sort of taking Raquel's side of this? doesn't make sense. I don't like this. So Lisa Vanderpump basically knows, right, what just happened. She knows. You can see it in her face because she's like, ooh. It looks like sorrow. It's like, God, you're both still so stupid, and yet 40% of about as attractive as you were when I hired you. It's very sad for you. So she's got that look, but she's also got, like, three Betty Boops in her eyes, like at the slot machines in Vegas. Like, she's like, oh, ding, ding, <laughs> boop, boop, pee doop. <laughs> Comeback season. Sandoval's like, <laughs> I feel like Raquel doesn't have a lot of people in her corner, and she's, like, a really sweet girl, and she doesn't have a bad bone in her body. I mean, she might have one bone in her body. If she you know doesn't have mean. one bad bone in her body. I felt every single one of them under me, so I know. <sighs> There's no way to get around it, okay? Sorry. Yeah. It's just one roadblock of many tonight. So now we go to Lala's apartment. Lala's. <laughs> she's got bookshelves in her new apartment, so she's got a lot of Lala books. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's all of her bookshelves are filled with Lala books. It's all the is... leftover inventory. So Lala's like... Good for her, girl. I've eaten plenty of a cup of pasta out of a Watch What Crappens mug that That's I true. sold for 11 years. Who am I to say? If anyone knows about leftover inventory, <laughs> it's us. So uh, Christina and Katie come on over, and Allie, or they're, com- they're going to be coming over, and Lala's like, there's something very special about my birthday just want to squirt all over my cake. <laughs> Feels like a new chapter for me, which you can read about in my book that no one has bought, apparently. So then they have this moment where all the girls who are like having the best time of their lives, like in the lyrics of the song, are like, oh my God, tomorrow's your birthday, Lala. Oh yeah, I'm so excited for your birthday. That's yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, I'm excited. Me too. I'm so excited. It's going to be so what fun. What are we going to do for your birthday? It's going to be so fun. We're going to turn up it's more than be we're like turning up now. It's going to be the best birthday that we've ever had. Turn down for what? It's going to be amazing. So Katie is going to be finally bringing her new man, who, as we mentioned, is like a combination of Timothy Chalamet and Weird Al Yankovic. Also known as Weird, Weird Chalamet Yankovic. And after dating Tom Schwartz so long, it's nice that she's going to date somebody with, like, pitcher energy. You know what I mean? So, um... His name is Satchel, and... Yes. He was named after a very famous baseball player named Satchel Paige. But you know, when, when they announced that, you know that somewhere Paige the Sorbo was like, oh my God, I love that someone named their child after my Satchel. <laughs> I'm such an influencer. Content day. So Lala's like, oh my God, Satchel Paige, is that the one that brought you the ball from Mexico, from Morocco? Is that the one that brought you a ball? And Katie's like, I was doing all my stuff in private out of sight with Satchel, but now I figure's the time. I'm fucking Satchel in front of everybody at your fucking birthday. I was like, yes, Katie. Bring him on, because you know I can't wait to see Satchel. I'm like, bring me Satchel. Bring him along now. Satchel of gold. A Satchel of gold. <laughs> so now, uh, oh, it's a, oh it's, a, it got, it's a serious scene. The Toms have arrived at Villa Rosa. And we hear buzzing, and it's Ken. He's like... Hello, boys. How have you been doing? What are you doing at my house right now? He's got his little hat on that sort of looks like the thing on an oven to turn the flame up. Yeah. And then uh, Sandoval's like, hey, Ken, brought you some flowers, bro. How you doing, bro? Dude. And Schwartz is like, yeah, how you doing, brother? I'm so sorry about baby Rosé. And uh, Ken's my, like, well, you know. I we wish I were good. I wish I were still good at words, but I'm not. So here's my card. We love Me, Ru- Tom. Tom, sad. Feel better. We love Ru- we love little Rosé very much. I mean, it was like a horse, but it wasn't just a horse. It was a tiny horse. It was like a, it was like a horse for people to ride, but not big people, tiny people. Tiny people could ride the horse. 
Love those very, very much. And then LVP's outside talking to her little Puffy, the dog named Puffy. And she's saying, you know I'm upset, don't you? You're going to miss her too, I know. But don't worry, there's one that looks exactly like her, which helps with the pain, little Jiggy. Now give Mama a kiss. By the way, did anyone notice Puffy looks like he has alopecia also? What is happening? Is this going to turn into like a... Jiggy. Do you? Is this going to turn into a Hulu movie? Like, where it's like some weird, like, like doggy Munchausens? What if she was the real Munchausen all along? It was LVP. Wait a second. You New have Vanda Housen. Twist. So anyway, it uh, is actually, it's, it's very sad what happened. Yeah, it is so sad. Rose. My God. God, so, um, God we, were, we were sad, guys. Yeah, no, it is sad. Those horses are so cute. And now the one is without... I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Okay, so then um, we go through the story, well, which Ali- I'm not going to I like that. Lisa's pivot. I like Lisa's pivot. Oh, I just feel so emotionally depleted right now. So tell me about the cheating in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about how we're keeping the show on the air, shall we? <laughs> So Sandoval's like, oh my god, that trip, what a great reset. Well, that's when his affair supposedly started, so I don't know that that was the best choice of words. So Lisa's like, Lisa's like, you've got to get this restaurant open so that way it can close very soon after from terrible reviews. And Schwartz is like... We can't start a fire in a restaurant that's not open. Insurance doesn't give us money for things like that, darling. It's not fun when no one eats your strange Peruvian ceviche and the restaurant's not open yet. It needs to be open. So, um, so Lisa's basically like... She's like, you got to get this open. And Schwartz goes, Oh, it's not like we were skirting responsibility by being young hooligans, you know? I'm like... One of you started an affair, and the other one ate someone's sushi off their plate. <laughs> yeah. That's young hooligans. And Schwartz goes, we don't even have a working freezer. <laughs> <laughs> what? And Sandoval's like, yeah, well, I'm sick of the fucking nickel and diming. Let's get it open. And Schwartz is like, Tom, it doesn't matter how much you huff and puff and say that. You don't back it up with your actions. <laughs> she goes, yes. oh, well, that's a big accusation that he doesn't back it up. And he's like, well, sometimes I back it up. And Sandoval's like, oh, fuck off! And then Schwartz actually has some small receipts here, which is more than their POS machine does. He's like, he's like, well, when we had to submit the menu, you went to band practice, and then you got your nails done, and then you weighed in at 1230, and I'm about to pass out from doing nothing all day. Dude, that brand practice was scheduled a week before, and I'm not about to walk around with some grubby-ass, chipped-ass nails. Dude, hey, dude, dude, dude. Dude, do you, know how much, do you know how much band practice you have to do if you're trying to hit that just average B-plus performance rate? You can't, re- you can't front an almost B-plus band without whiteout nails, bro, all right? And he's like, bro, the real issue is, the real issue is, we've been waiting to pull the trigger, and there's one person, one person, putting on the brakes every fucking time, and you know who that person is! Oh, there he goes. (laughs) Sit down, woman. So, uh... So now we go over to now we go over to Tom and Ariana at home. <laughs> I know we're just all ready. We're ready for it. I mean, guys, we're all gonna go through this together. Hold hands with your neighbor, just okay? Said. Remind each other that we all love each other. We're all part of the Bravo family here because this is tough. This is tough and it's awkward and strange. There's just so many trigger words in here. You know, there was the. Oh, we just went to Mexico and had a re- uh, reset. We pushed the reset button. Okay, that triggered. And then we have this. Hey, Dumplin. I'm like, don't use a word with dump in it. I hate you so much right now. Okay. Now, this scene is important because if anybody listened to, well, let's face it, a recap of the Howie Mandel episode, because I know yeah. it was very difficult to get through it. 
Um, Tom said that he broke up with Ariana and that the day he broke up with her, she came to him and wanted him to fertilize her eggs. That is this scene, is it not? Wow. So let's, let's, watch, uh, let's watch this scene of Tom being very clear with Ariana about he wa- how he wants to break up with her. It's very clear. Yeah. So the scene opens up. Uh, Ariana's talking about the eggs and how she wants to fertilize them because they're more viable and she doesn't want to have a biological clock dictate her life. More power to her, I'd like to add. And it doesn't mean she necessarily wants to have babies, but she just wants to have flexibility, okay? Yeah, she's like, my stance on all things related to being pregnant, like giving birth, like that hasn't changed. I mean, I'm not totally anti-baby, but like I'm afraid it'll come out with a porn stash and a flat tonal quality. But still, you know, an egg fertilized by an off-key Ali Sheedy and Breakfast Club wannabe is worth more than an unfertilized egg, so... Wow, I can't believe you brought Ali Sheedy into this. I mean, she's been through a lot. She's an underrated member of the Brat Pack. Remember when she made it snow over the picture of with course. her dandruff? She's probably God, my, my, you, number two, my number two Rat Packer behind Mayor Winningham. There, I said it. God, wouldn't it be great if Mayor Winningham joined a Real Housewives? It wouldn't make any sense, but I think it would work. She'd so. be very quiet. So Sandoval's like, last year when she asked me to fertilize her eggs, I said, sure, fine. And then we see a clip of the reunion when she's like, well, Tom was supposed to fertilize my eggs, but then he, like, didn't. Like, he forgot or something. And it cuts, it cuts back, and he's like, well, why would she want me to fertilize her eggs when we might or might not have kids, whatever she decides? And he's like, I need to let off some steam, Ariana. Yeah, you know, he he does. I mean, he just had, a, like, a whole five days in Mexico. That's stressful, man. I hope he gets to let off some steam. Well, so, because the suggestion was he can't drink for, he can't drink or smoke for five days, right? Right, to fertilize for the fertilizer. First of all, I'm fine. I mean, my, God knows what my mother was doing. Actually, I do know what she's told me because I do know what she's doing because she told me what she was doing. She was drinking a bottle of wine a day and smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, Okay. Now, I'm not suggesting anybody do that while they're pregnant, but I am suggesting I really want to drink in a cigarette right now, okay? I forgot where I was going with that. So, Ariana's like, listen, I think you just need some healthier... Thank you, thank you. Those are my people. You know we, when they say there's a Ronnie it. and there's a Ben, you know? My people are like, oh yeah, there's a drink and a smoke right here. You want to do some lines? My people are like, oh, well, did you hear that? He wants to drink and smoke. I can't believe that. Your people are literally Mayor Winningham sitting there like, yes. oh, my God, fuck That's these why people. The scattered applause for Mayor Winningham. Those are my people. Thank you. We're a quiet people, but we have very devastating opinions. That was so fun. <laughs> you just watch out for us, okay? Silent so. assassins. We're like... Uh, Then we get to the real twisty, gross part of this scene, which is where he he blames her for everything. Right? He's start. He's trying to. He's now started. We know this from the future that he's now begun this affair with Ariana, and so now he's doing the guy thing. Raquel. Where Mayor Winningham? What? You're right. Oh my God! In the future, he did start. In in the future, he did start a, a relationship with Ariana. Um, with Raquel. Okay, he's already started the affair with Raquel, so now he's doing that guy thing where he makes everything your fault, and he's been trying to break up yeah. with you this whole time, right? We've all been there. So he's like, he's like, it just gets frustrating. I mean, like, I feel like the past few months, I'll, like, explain to you a situation, I'll, like, explain my point of view, and it feels like you're, like, very quick to take the other person's, like, point of view. And, like, I don't want someone at my back unconditionally, but I want someone to say, yeah, cool, I'm so glad you spent $3,000 on more lights for our apartment. You know what? It makes me feel like you question my intelligence. You can't question something that's not there. So Ariana's like, Tom, I wouldn't be with anyone I thought was an idiot. Uh, And secondly, 
if I thought you were an idiot enough to say it out loud, I would be so nice to you all the time because I'd be like, oh my God, he's so dumb. But you know what's great is that Ariana actually, I feel like, does that on the regular and he just doesn't notice. Yeah. So Tom's like, um, yeah, or like you act like I'm annoying or something, like I annoy you or something like that. And I'm like, you're in parachute pants. I'm like, you're the uh, one in the cover band. You're in parachute pants and a black silk shirt with gold polka dots, and you just painted your uh, nails white and you're wearing eyeliner yeah. to a meeting about fertility. You fuck. Ariana's like, Tom, we've been together a long time. I can only imagine how annoying I am. No, Ariana, you've literally never been annoying on this show. It's, it's unbelievable. Stop saying that. What the fuck are you talking about? Yes, she has. Ariana's been just as annoying as a lot of these motherfuckers on this. Listen, Ariana Maybe is... Maybe about sketch listen, comedy. I get it, but let's not, let's not push the whole boat over here, okay? So, um... We go to LVP, and a new, guess what? You need to kayate down there, madame. I'm sorry. I love you. Tell her. Tell I love you. About to buy doing, you a one-way ticket to, on a plane to Georgia, signals. midnight train to Georgia. Okay. So LVP is talking to Jasmine, because no one knows what happened to fucking Mia from two scenes ago. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah. Darling, hello, Jasmine. Now, listen, I know it's hot out here, but it won't be a minute. There will be a white van coming around. Someone will put a bag over your head. Just stay calm. It'll all work out in the end, my little muffin. <laughs> I, love, I love Lisa trying to explain why the restaurant's empty. She's like, oh, I know it's super quiet because it's so hot, right, Jasmine? Fan your face. Fan your face. It's hot. Wink, wink, right? And then, so then, you know what I thought? Did anyone else notice this weird moment when Lisa says to Jasmine, she goes, okay, well, I'm going to go sit over there and my friends will come in. And Jasmine goes, go right ahead. Yeah. Jasmine, you don't get to tell Lisa Vanderpump to go right ahead. Thanks, Jasmine. I will. <laughs> Ma'am? Uh, she was never seen again. As if she was never seen again. That's right. You just hear... Like wheels squeaking outside and she's gone. Lisa's like, Guillermo, get the one at the booth. I don't want to see her again. The eagle has landed. The eagle has landed. <laughs> so they sit down and uh, very excited because this is at last our big Garcelle crossover moment. Love Garcelle. Winner of the 2023 crappy of Bravo Liberty of the Year. And we also, I was shocked. There was a local uh, news anchorman there. Uh, played by Oliver. <laughs> yeah. I'm Thank Oliver. You. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. yeah. It's me. Yeah, I'm Oliver. I'm Oliver. Hey. So they start talking about Lisa's rosé, and Garcelle's like, well, of, <laughs> of course your rosé beats everyone else's rosé, Lisa. I mean, it's fabulous. And Lisa's like, everyone. <laughs> everyone. Everyone. Uh, yeah. Like I said, everyone, everyone. Okay, Lisa Rinna, I'll say it. Lisa Rinna. <laughs> Lisa Rinna. So the producer's like, how do you feel about Lisa Rinna coming up with her own? And uh, Vanderpump's like, oh, you know, I just think that people should come up with something unique. That's all. And it just cuts to Lisa Rinna like, ha, 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 ha. I made rosé. Ha, 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 ha. I made rosé. Ha, 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 ha. Well, listen, Vanderpump said I should come up with something unique, so here is my new establishment, Sexy Unique Cafe. <laughs> Suck! <laughs> Light, fun, silly talk, Lisa Rinna shape. So, Oliver, the girls are fighting over you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's happening there, Oliver? <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> So uh, she's like, so you're going to go see Raquel? He's like, oh, yes, we have a little rendezvous later tonight. Ha, 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 Well, now, just so I can get this on record, as the news have already broken that you're cheating on your wife, and I want to make sure I have no culpability, even though most likely I've known this the whole time, Oliver. <laughs> you like Raquel, and you've separated from your wife, have you? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. We've been split up for months now, okay? Yeah. We, well, mostly. Mostly. 
But, you know, we're working on co-parenting. She has kids. Love her kids. Her kids are great. They're great. You know, like, uh, you know, we're the, the maybe. Co-parenting, the co-parenting slash parenting. I like slash her. Slash living together. She's great. Still you know, together. I did get my own place. In the, our apartment. But sometimes I go back. Yeah. We'll, like, we may sleep together in the same bed. Like, I'll buy my own groceries. They don't sell vagina. So sometimes I'll go back there we're occasionally. Like, yeah. But mostly it's in my place. Mostly. But we're basically completely divorced. So, um, Garcelle's like, well, if I can say something, I think my ex-husband, Mike, modeled what a stepdad does. I loved your dad when I was married to him. And I love that Garcelle does this whole comparison to the first dad. Garcelle left his ass, okay? And I think that that's all that needs to be said here. So, Garcelle's like, I mean, Lisa, (laughs) how did you meet Ken? Did you feel it? She's like, oh, I felt something. I think I was bending over in a hot tub and I felt something like a little a little room at my ankles. It was very strange. I said, is Rod Stewart knocking at the back door? Come round front, Rod. Come round front. <laughs> <laughs> so James and Allie. Oh my God. James and Allie. Oh my God. James is another one who, you know, gets off really easy on this show. This There's guy's always literally someone worse. fucking psychopathic, okay? This is James in this scene. Ali, all right, you put on the pink dress I told you to. Twirl, 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 twirl around, twirl around in a circle. All right, that's good. Faster, faster. All right, that's good. You know, put on some knee socks. Put on some knee socks. I need these knee socks. I need... What? You look good, yeah, you look good, you look sexy girl, you look good, you look fat now, you look fat, put on your blue dress, blue dress, put on your blue dress, put on, alright, looks good, come to me, I'm gonna marry you, I fucking love you, I fucking love you, I'm so fucking in love with you, I can't stop looking at you, god damn it, you're fucking fine. Like, Jesus Christ, James. <laughs> it's over, have a seat now. <laughs> So Allie's like, last night at Lala's apartment, I was grabbing my stuff to leave, and then we were chatting, and that's when I mentioned, I might have started something. I was like, see, here's Allie just doing the old Raquel act. Like, what? Why can't, you know what I want to do? Wear a dress that you'll like today. That's all. And then she shows up with the plot line of the season, you know? Yeah. Uh, is that a girl? I, I and kept... I cheer like sports. I'm like, take it. I... Go for it. Allie coming in with a smoking gun. So she's like, last night I was at Lala's apartment as I was getting stuff and chatting and leaving. And that's when I mentioned I saw Sandoval and Raquel dancing together at the Abbey. And I was like, that's kind of weird. I was like, where's Ariana? And also, who's Abby? They're just dancing on that dance mom's lady. <laughs> um, she's like, ow! Get Abby off Lee. of me! So Allie... <laughs> so Allie's like, I thought it was kind of weird. It was like 1 a.m. And we're like, where is Ariana? And she tells us, I wouldn't be comfortable with my boyfriend being out with someone at 1 a.m., but everyone's different. Your boyfriend is out with somebody at 1 a.m. every day. What the fuck are you talking about? But also, I'm on your side right now. So, very well done. (laughs) So, James is like, you know, I've noticed how much Rick has been hanging out with the Toms, both of them. Best of buds these days, aren't there? Best of three little slutty people all hanging out together. So, then James is like, yeah, they're best friends. You know what? They're just best friends today. I wouldn't put any stock into that. Pink skirt again. Pink skirt. (laughs) So then we get a song, a Vanderpump Rules song. We haven't done any tonight, but this one really caught, caught my fancy, okay? It's like... Can you hear me? I can whistle. What? That's not a song. That sounds like a little kid. Can you hear me? It's, it sounds like Charlie's audition for Gwen Stefani's cosmetic brand. Can you hear me? I can whistle. We'll try again tomorrow. So we're at Raquel's apartment, and Graham the dog is barking, and uh, Raquel's like, do you hear Sheena? I was like, I think the entire neighborhood hears Sheena, because it's like, ah. Um, knock, like, knock. 
knock, knock, knock. I never know if I should like knock or not. But I was like, I think today I'm like not gonna knock, but like maybe tomorrow I will knock. I don't know. It's like a lot of things to think about, but like I'm gonna document it all in my vlog and we'll get to it together. You don't know if you should knock you visiting a lady in a tree? There's a door there. Knock on it, you fucking idiot. So then we go to Lala's. Who's there? Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure if I should do the knock knock part of that joke. <laughs> I just answered myself. Oh my God. That's why I never knock. So we're now at Lala's apartment and Christina comes over and Lala has that, you know, Lala has that mom who's so supportive and sweet and brings over like, happy birthday, Lala, to yeah. your house, spelled out really big and it takes up your whole house. And I'm like, thanks, mom. So she's got that balloon. And then Christina <laughs> comes over and she's like, oh my God, hi, happy birthday. Happy this is going to be amazing. Oh my God, how's it We're going? Happy so birthday. so much fun. Yeah, so much fun. I was thinking Do you about this all day while I was potting soil. It's hey, going to be so fun. I was talking to Stassi and she said you could do the birthday thing if you want. Okay, good. <laughs> hey, it's my motherfucking birthday. <laughs> Just full on doing the Stassi thing. Just, it's my first birthday that I've celebrated single in a very long time. And I'm just feeling like all I want to do is end the night with birthday sex. So whoever's ready and willing, come to my bed. <laughs> so she's like, I have so much to tell you. And Christine's like, but I just saw you the other day. Did something happen between me potting that plant and then me potting the plant that I just planted before I came over here? She's like, no, listen, I just sent you and Katie the screenshots of all of his wife's stamps. So, like, wait a minute. She goes, so she reached out, and she said that Oliver posted that pic of us, and that she, you know, that she knew that the way that Oliver was leaning in on him, that she got a pit in her stomach, and she knew something was wrong, so I told her that Raquel made out with Oliver. You were talking to the wife, Lala. Come on. The wife reached out to Lala, really, and Lala just happened to answer some rando DM yeah, from the wife. Yeah. That is not the case. You know Raquel looked up that wife, and... Guess what I just saw at a place called Pussies and Polar Bears in Las Vegas. What was that place called? She just... It disco called Pussy. Disco, <laughs> dis, disco Pussy. It has a Thank second you. Michelin star. So... Uh, disco Pussy. I over at Raquel's apartment. Raquel... Now it's like a back and forth scene, right? So Raquel's like, you guys, Sheena, guess what? Um, why? I, is it going to be something about the fact that some bitch is putting macaroni and enchiladas? Because I won't stand for it. They should just cancel Facebook already, seriously. <laughs> so Raquel's like, well, I just got a DM from somebody saying that apparently Oliver isn't separated from his wife. And his wife is posting stories saying he's been cheating on her with multiple women and specifically naming me. I don't know. Are they together or not? What a predicament. Uh, well, I mean, there's, like, no way that he'd be, like, coming around if he's, like, not separated, like, obviously. Which you is were with Eddie Cibrian. You know that's a damn lie. Men don't lie. Men totally don't lie. I can tell you that much. Here's what I know about men. If they're with somebody, they're not going to be coming around, barking at your back door. Like a hound dog. Crying all the time. Get out of here, Lisa. It's not even your scene. So then over at Lala's, Christina's like, obviously Raquel knows none of this, right? It's like, yeah, well, Raquel's about to know because I'm about to go fucking in on that hoe. Okay, Lala, trying a little hard here. <laughs> Come on. <You're... laughs> So then Christina, even Christina's like, oh my God. I love that they, Christina was willing to come back to help, but she's so mortified by being there. Every scene she's like, oh. So then we uh, go back to Brock and Sheena, and Brock's like, you're going on a date with him tonight, are you? Is that what you're supposed to do tonight? Do it. Hey, here's a question. Spell Brock. Do it. Let's see if you can do it. Huh? Look at this. Miss Brilliant Pants over there. 16 letters, it's a hard one. <laughs> so, Raquel... Let me give you a hint. You're not going to need to buy any vowels. <laughs> Raquel's basically like, well, Oliver texted me last night, and he was like, see you tomorrow, beautiful. And she was like, oh, well, you should like definitely still go and like talk to him in person. What? That's the worst advice of all. No, it's not. Sheena's like, get the scene out of it. Sheena opened Vanderpump Rules by confronting... Brandy, or being confronted. See, here's what's hard. I never know on any given scene, are we 
talking about the scene or are we talking about like the production? Because yes, she should totally get her scene out of it. But then in life, yeah. it's the wrong thing. And I'm getting, I'm always, I feel like I'm always analyzing the wrong thing. No, it's all the wrong thing. It's Vanderpump Rules. Okay. Like it's all go. bad. If you're ever in doubt on Vanderpump Rules, just say, I fucking hate these people. And then yeah. everybody claps. That's true. That's a great way. That's a great catch-all. That's a great correction. Oh, that was a great reset. I but feel also, great. But also, here's how I look at it. It is production because, listen, Sheena knows. Sheena literally lied down on the train tracks and got run over to open this show. Like, she, she shot a scene with Brandy Glanville telling her off, okay? And that started this whole show. So Sheena knows. Also, Oliver used Raquel to get onto this show. And it is only right for Raquel to use Oliver to make herself the heroine of this show. Even though it doesn't work in the end. <laughs> Even though Listen, you got you to gotta credit the, the plays that were played, okay? So, so you know, she, basically Raquel's like, you know what I'm going to do? Because this is not planned at all. I'm going to call the ex whose number I suddenly have. <laughs> Hi, Samantha, it's Raquel. Yeah, no, you're not FaceTiming with the broomstick. It's an actual person. I'm so sorry to hear everything, and I watch your stories, and I read your Instagram post, and I had no idea that he was still committed to you. What? No. No, no, I'm fine. No, no, I'm not having a seizure. I'm, I'm, I'm wakeboarding. I'm just nervous, so I'm like wakeboarding in place. I aged out of pageants. So, she tells us, the way that Samantha is talking to me right now, she's saying that Oliver made promises to her to work on marriage, and they're still living in the same apartment together. It just seems so manipulative and selfish. I mean, to do this when your girlfriend knows about it, that's terrible. The entire time, while Raquel is talking to Oliver's ex or not ex, my favorite part is they keep cutting to Sheena, whose faces are like, ah, 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 It's all happening. 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 You're rubbing that off of your arm, darling. And I love that Brock is just as fucking messy as Sheena, too. Brock's like, why don't you call her? <laughs> So Lala, meanwhile, still like, she's still trying to explain this all to Christina, who's bored out of her mind. Lala's like, keep in mind, Oliver left the pussy place and went home and slept with her. And Christina goes, he slept with his wife and it reminded me of Soap Dish. He's cheating on me, Rose. With his wife. With his wife. With his wife. Uh, so Christina's like, he went and slept with his wife. She goes, yes, his wife's. And Christina's like, wait, so you're saying he hung out with Raquel, then he went home, and then he slept with his wife? And she's like, yes! And then Lala gives us her big victim story. She's like, I know the feeling so well. I saw a pic of my ex literally walking across the streets with two chicks. And there was nothing about that photo that was telling, but my gut told me all I needed. To. You know what's so funny? That same day, that article came out that said Randall Emmett is broke and owes millions of dollars to people and has been fucking starlets on a casting couch. The way the world just... I have to say, when I saw that photo of Randall Emmett, I had a sinking feeling in my heart because I realized, oh my God, I've been sleeping with a wild boar. Oh my God. And Lala, I know Lala, so, so shocked. Did we, I, I have a question. Did anyone else think when Lala said, I know this feeling so well, she was going to say, oh, like just how Raquel said, like, was talking to Oliver and Oliver said, oh, I'm separated, but then he wasn't, that she was going to say, it's like me with Randall when he said that he was separated and he wasn't. And she was like, no, it was because when I saw the pictures in Nashville, I was like, huh, huh, hmm. huh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So um, Christina's like, so wait, what is she going to do now? She's like, she's going on a date with him tonight. <laughs> and Christina's like, you're joking. Oh, my God. What am I doing here? So I live in Santa Monica. I have to walk down the street and see people. Over the other place, Sheena's like, oh, my God. Now you're going to get dragged on social media. You're so lucky. And like... You're going to be like the other woman. Like, that's, like, not fucking fair to you. Because you know what? Once you are labeled as a mistress, it never goes away. I've 
literally been called this for the past 36 years of my life. <laughs> I, I came out of my mother's womb and my baby bottle was shaped like an A. It was horrific. In my yearbook, my yearly saying is crop tops are sort of my thing. And everyone who signed it, signed it, you're a mistress, I hate you. It's really hard. That's <laughs> what we had before social media, yearbooks. At whore. <laughs> you're a mistress. So, <laughs> this is also, now this is also one of those moments where we all know that Raquel deserves a lot. But at this moment, Raquel is being slut shamed in the wrong time period. I mean, isn't it all, it's, it's crazy how this all worked. So it's a pre-dragging Raquel for something that she did not deserve at this time. <laughs> But, but then that she, she was actually did. doing at this time <laughs> that we just didn't know about yet. It's, it's so, a mind fucking This show. is crazy. This, this show is, is 12 monkeys. This should be studied in Yale. Next year, I just want to see 12 monkeys spilling drinks on each other in the uh, opening. That's it. Just for the Madeline Stowe of it. Okay, so... Which, by the way, 12 monkeys took place in Philadelphia. Okay. I'm just going to say Philadelphia whenever I can. Philadelphia and Mayor Winningham... Oh, shut up, mares. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so then we go to um, Lala's birthday. Okay, let's just go to Lala's birthday because we have to get to Satchel before it's stroke of midnight. Now, Satchel, look. I looked at Satchel and I thought, I'm fat, I'm fat, you know. Because, you know, he looks like Weird Al. It's, it's like Jason Schwartzman... He's playing Weird Al Yankovic, and Weird Al Yankovic is doing a parody music video about Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. What did you call him? Weird Al Chalamet. It I like weird, that. Weird, it was either like Weird Al Chalamet weird or Al Weird Chalamet. Chalamet Yankovic. I haven't decided. Which one do you guys like more? Because that's what we'll run I with. I like Weird Al Chalamet. Weird Al Chalamet. That's yeah. good, right? Weird Al Chalamet. Yeah. I was drawn Trademark to Ben. Trademark <laughs> Ben. That is so good. Okay, so Trademark this kid, all of us. look. First of all, people are really ragging on this guy, including us. We just called him Weird Al Chalamet. But it's honestly, we're a ragging on this guy. This guy is actually adorable, okay? Like, if this guy showed up in my Hello Fresh box, I would not put it in the garbage disposal. Like, he is cute. I think he's very cute. Listen, I don't know if I can co sign. Do you guys not? Listen. You guys, did he do something? I, you know, look, you know what? I appreciate his ode to, to Rolf the Muppet, but, you know. Haircut, yes. Like, does he look misguided? Of course. Like, he needs work. But for his first time, I think he's cute. Ronnie. All right, well, also, Ronnie, I'll it is my, it croissant. is my job as my co-host to yes and you. But you're making it very difficult right now. <laughs> I mean, I just think people are ragging on Chalamet, and he's kind yeah. of like, he just shave his head and he's Everyone's fine. Everyone's allowed I mean? to have fine or, or beauty and different things. Man bun him or something. So, um, anyway. <laughs> Haters. This is the... So, we never uh, thought this would be the moment that would break all of us. I know. I know that now the show turns into bedlam. Yeah. We've talked about so much shit up until this point. Now you all are taking off your clothes, flipping over cars and shit. <laughs> okay, so um, don't worry. We're in the final stretch here, everybody. I know it's getting long. So Chalamet comes up. I think he's fine. But then I realize right away, this guy's a piece of shit. And let me tell you why. He's a user just like the rest of them. Listen, you yeah. think you think James is the only one who could use someone to get on this show? You think Raquel, you think all these people, this show is built with bricks of users, okay? Yes. And this is why I think so, because the entire time he's just doing this with Katie. Oh my God, Satchel. Where else do we see that? Every other piece of shit guy on this show is James. It's James doing this. Although James Grooming never brought like a bowl to Morocco. Well, we'll see. That's my <laughs> prediction. So um, Katie is like, well, let's just say I won't be complaining to anyone about his dick doesn't work. Or his blow dryer. But... <laughs> so actually, you know what, though? Like, 
If he comes in with a scene with a flat ironed hair, I don't know what I'll do with myself. <laughs> I'll be like, I don't know. This may be the end for Bravo. But uh, so everyone's like, oh, look at this interesting person. And James is like, hello, 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 strange person uh, who likes Katie. Hello there. This actually feels wonderful. I just want you to know. I it's know. Like a back scratch. He's lulling himself like, into a job. Like this oh, is a satchel. So Ron Sheen is, is like, my oh my god, it's like so weird seeing Katie with this like uh, Macter shaggy dog looking motherfucker. I mean, he looks like he got groomed at Vanderpump Dogs. I mean, to be fair, Brock is a literal golden retriever. <laughs> He's literally sitting there with the do- uh, ball in his mouth, like. Hey, what's this about rock? Hey, what's this about rock? <laughs> and, then, and then, in a surprise cameo, she surfaces every four years. Jenna appears out of nowhere. For those who know, they know. Jenna's there, and she goes, As a couple, you two have the best eyebrows combined I've ever seen. <laughs> so that, then felt we... like a, that, felt, that felt like an attack. Yeah, that felt like a backhanded compliment, for sure. Jenna. So, um, okay, so then a uh, time, time old tradition on Bravo is when piece of shit gross men that you do not want to see naked have shower scenes, okay? It's, Shep does it every year or two. I think the only one we actually welcomed was, like, Gorga. Remember, jo- Joey Gorga has one of those every season. Jack back in the day. Gorga's shower scene, let's be honest, that was wonderful. But come mostly... On. Come on, Mostly in recent memory, it is Austin and Shep, let's be honest, I know. okay? And then, of course, like, no shower scenes with Andrea. Thanks, bravo. So he's just like, oh, my God, it's so slippery in this bathroom. Oh. I need to find somewhere to put my tea. It's just me, Hennis and little Tom Schwartz. Oh, I never knew oh. anything to anyone. I'm going to write a poem because I was a wordsmith. So back to the party. So, Katie's... What did you do today, huh? Changed my sheets. Oh my god. I was like, what did they smell like espresso cheese? <laughs> I'm not believing that you banged satchel all day, okay? Is that what you're trying to sell? So they're having they are just full of Schadenfreude right now. As we all as all of us probably were when this happened to Schadenfreude, yeah. Yeah, we some Schadenfreude. Okay, you know what? You better back it up. Back it up, okay? Schadenfreude. You know what? She had a lot of Schadenfreude. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. You get Schadenfreude when you're not ageless. Okay, I'm sorry. So the news has broken that uh, Oliver and Raquel may be having some sort of affair, and so now Lala and by is it's broken. A... Lala has her phone out and is waving it around, going, ha! Ha! She's taking a victory lap. So then we cut to the date with Oliver. And Raquel. Now, I don't know if you're coming in pigtails, because that... Do you think that's going to make me forgive you quicker? Fucking pigtails? Really, Oliver? So he's like, ha, 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 ha. Hey, Raquel, welcome to the tea. Please have a seat. We're going to have a fun time tonight. Remember Disco Pussy? Ha, 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 ha. And she's like, your, your wife says that you've cheated with multiple women, and I'm one of them, and that's, like, shocking to me because no. you made it seem like you were separated completely. And when people make out in Vegas, they need to know everything about each other's marital status and have paperwork on every little thing. How dare you do this to me? That couldn't be farther from the truth. <laughs> we are not. We are fully divorced slash living together. Still in a committed relationship still, slash totally broken up. Totally misconstrued slash slept with her about 10 minutes ago. And she's like, I'm furious at Oliver for making me look a certain way that I'm not at all. He's very openly a cheater and hasn't done anything to hide it from his wife. And that makes me think he wants her to feel bad. Now, if he had lied to her and she didn't know about it, that would be empowerment. Like, what the yeah. fuck, Raquel? It doesn't, it doesn't make up for me getting bashed on social media where people are saying I'm sleeping with a guy who's actually married. It's not fair. I'm sleeping with a guy who's merely in a long-term relationship. So um, she like has a big walkout moment where he's like, uh, I mean, I guess I'm sorry. She's like, okay. Bye. 
and like hoverboards out, and that's it. He's like, he's like, do I still get to be on the show? Oh fuck it, my mom's famous. I know what a night for Garcelle to debut. I was like, oh. So then um, Raquel has cojones. You've got to hand it to her. She's yeah. pulling all of this off right under everybody's nose, and then leaves this scene and texts Sheena to come to Lala's birthday party. <laughs> I mean, Raquel, like they clearly give her marching orders, and she's like, okay, if this will get me an ice cream social. Because remember the scene from two weeks ago where she walked up to Katie in Mexico and was like, by the way, you're not allowed at the private club member with the pool. <laughs> you're right. That was a full circle moment for her. She finally became the girl who's not inviting you to the ice cream social after math. So, yeah. So now... Raquel's going to go over to Lala's birthday party. Okay, Doesn't so cut back to that. So James is like, Lala, how does those headlines make you feel then? Because aren't you glad you weren't the one making out with Oliver? Because before, remember, you were jealous of her making out with Oliver because you wanted to make out with Oliver? Are we forgetting that ever happened now? Are we forgetting that now? This bitch sat across from me and says, you're a mistress. Well, bitch, I wouldn't be so quick to throw daggers at me, mistress, bitch, mistress, mistress, cut fitness, mistress. mistress. Mistress, I bet your mom's real proud of skills now, bitch. Yeah, she says, I bet your mom's real proud of you, bitch. And then she goes, there's a woman at the other end of this. Uh, Yeah, Uh, you know what's so funny? And I think it's really good that when this happened with Lala and she found out about Rand, that she immediately left Rand and made it right, you know, because that's the right thing to do. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, here's, a, here's an Instagram post I just found from that time. Oh, yeah. When his baby mama wants to be a somebody, but as basic and boring as they come, she doesn't even get invited on a press tour, laughy face. Honey, watch me rock the rocks with the picture of Lala's power ring from the television show Power. Ah. Mesh risk. Mesh risk. So Sheena and Raquel meet on the sidewalk as if they're like exchanging government like <laughs> information between like Russia and the US like it's two spies it's like the and, like, Americans a, they're dressed like they're from the 80s it's like a Len like, Dayton novel it's like okay I only have five minutes before I have to get it back in there otherwise my cover's gonna be blown so Raquel's like that was nuts I was like I'm sure you heard things were going around and then I got up I left the table he didn't even get up when I left the table <laughs> how rude Wow, I can't believe he the guy in the show didn't even pull my matters. chair out. That was crazy. So Sheena's like, no, son, I'm up. what's going to happen now? Well, I want to see Lala. She's like, Lala? You want to see Lala? That is hilarious, dangerous. I love it. I'm going to get Lala. It's going to be so yeah. funny. Come on into Lala. Let's go let's let's and talk to Lala. Lala. Let's talk to Lala. Let's talk to Lala. So they go inside. Raquel does her patented thing where she waves from her hip, where she goes like this. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'll be really quick. I'm feeling bad, so I'm only gonna wait for my hip. Hi. I'm gonna stand at an angle. Hi, can I just talk to you for a second? And Lala's like, what's up, mistress? What's up? What's up, mistress? Just keep saying it. Uh, and Lala's like, well, I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. But I'm like, of course. You would show up at my birthday parties. And I'm thrilled about it. I just can't wait for it. It's gonna be, I'm going to rip her to shreds. It's like five minutes later. She's like, okay, love you. <laughs> I Take know. care of yourself. Both women. Uh, so they go outside. And while they go outside, Sandoval, Katie's like loving it too. You know, she's like, stupid bitch. And so Sandoval's like, Yeah, Katie uh, goes, Katie goes, oh, I mean, that's just funny to me. It's just like, Funny to me. This is like Katie's happy place, you know? Yeah. You'll notice that you never see Katie smile unless she gets to, like, stick it to one of the other girls on the cast. Seriously. It's like, even at her own party, she never smiles. Maybe she's enjoying herself, but the only time she truly smiles is when she can tell someone to fuck off. And frankly, I, was about to say. I get it. I mean, I get it. It's a good feeling. So Sandoval's like, Katie, you seem to get, like, a lot of joy out of that. And she goes, I don't get joy out of it. It's just, like, it's, it's funny to me, you know? And uh, Katie's like, you know, and you seem to get a lot of joy out of Raquel, by the way. Wow. Yeah. Wow, I was not expecting a line like that to come out of this season. So he's and like, he goes, yeah, because yeah. we have a lot of fun together. So. And cool she's person. like, yeah, you guys go to the Abbey together at 1 o'clock in the morning. 
I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Fingernails. Get the fingernails. fuck out of here, dude. Fingernails. Get the fuck out of here. Fingernails. His eyes are going left and right. Like, where's the exit? I gotta get out of here. So, so outside, Raquel is like, La La, I didn't mean to crush your birthday party. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> La's like, you know what? You gave me the best gift, so I'm cool with it. I just squirted over your gift. <laughs> so Raquel's like, cool, cool. Well, I wanted to come here and apologize. <laughs> she wanted to go, cool, cool. Lala's like, you're a fucking bitch mistress. Cool, cool. She is. She's like, cool, so, okay, cool. cool. Like, you know when you're okay. going to talk to Lala. Like, how, when has Lala ever been kind to Raquel? You know? Yeah. So she's like, here I go. Here to get called a dumb slut yet again by Lala, you know? So she's like, cool, cool. Okay, so I just wanted to apologize for calling you a mistress specifically. Uh, specifically mistress. I'm not apologizing for the... I'm not apologizing for the space lights in my room because that was fucking neat, but sorry for calling you a mistress. So, and Lala goes, why? Because you are once. Because you are. With your slut lights. So then Raquel's like, well, yeah, I guess I am one after today. Ha ha. What the fuck? My whole world got turned upside down and I had no idea he was with his wife still. Cool, cool. So Lala's like, you want to say in Havasu's. I was upset at you because Oliver picked you instead of me, but you know what you should have been asking? I know you said you were separated, but how long has it been? Because I was asking those things. It's like, Lala, if no, Raquel weren't. weren't there, this would be Lala in an Oliver scandal instead. Lala's too excited about winning something she didn't win. Like, <laughs> some guy's a piece of shit. How does that make you win anything? You yeah. know? That's like one piece of shit you didn't fuck on this show? Okay, I'll give you that one. But otherwise, you didn't do anything here, ma'am. Do you have Oliver's Trends Union report? Because I do. Because I got that. <laughs> so Raquel's like, well, this is why I'm trying to come to you to apologize. Because like, I didn't realize how easily a man can mislead you into thinking one way. I'm like, you dated James for five years. This does not work. And Lala's like, um, the opposites. And you know how it feels. He's going to get off of this pretty squeaking clean, both fingers pointing at you, and the female always takes the brunt. I was like, you are, you are the baseball bat brunting up against her. She literally just called her like a slut and a mistress 20 times yeah. in the inside. And it's like, the women always get it the worst. Yeah, the women are always <laughs> slut shame. I love this show. So... <laughs> it's funny. This show made it's us... Legi it's legitimately very funny, regardless of whose side of whatever this whole mess is. It's very funny. This show made us believe in the Hippocrat party. Yeah. And it has for 10 years now. So, Raquel, she's like... Finally, La look, Lala is a pro at this. She's very good at what she does. And no matter what we say about these people, they're very good at their jobs. They I mean, We've Lala is a very good reality star. She's a really compelling personality if you ever listen to her podcast. Yeah. Um, and she knows when it's time to change. She started off a little funky. When, Lala, when Raquel comes in like a little Bambi-eyed bitch, basically, <laughs> and it's like, sorry. And she's like, you bitch, slut, slut bitch. You're like, no, no, wrong move. But now she's like, yeah, now she's you like, see, it's the men. It's the men who do this to us. Yeah, there's a reason, you know, like, we've had our, we've had our veils and our Laura Lees and our... Uh, Danica's. There's a reason why Lala has stuck around. She knows when to pivot. And so Lala is. Those other people also had self respect. Remember, Vale was like, no, 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 I won't be doing it. And people still to this day are like, hey, Vale, you want to talk about Vanderpump? Vale, come back, Vale. Vale? I think Vale thought she was applying to be a host on QVC and was very confused by the whole process. Uh. So did someone just. Oh, oh, because QVC is local. Sorry. Almost forgot. Lisa Rinna has wiped down a lot of hotel rooms in this city. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, so Lala, all of a sudden, after going so hard, he said, Lala just wanted to break Raquel down. She just wanted Raquel to be broken down and kiss the ring. And Raquel's finally doing it. So Raquel's like, like, yeah, sorry. So Lala's like, listen, listen, I've been the home wrecking whore. I've been the mistress. I've been all those things. But you know what? We rise above by sort of staying really low. And you know what else? We know what the truth is. And the truth is out there. We were possessed by aliens. 
She's like, you are not a mistress. And don't let anyone tell you that you are. <laughs> Until <laughs> next week when I start calling you a whore 20 times a day again. <laughs> and Raquel's like, sorry, Lala, I'm really sorry. Sorry. And like Raquel goes, I mean, Lala goes, I forgive and I forgot spitch. Have a good night. Bye, babe. And Raquel's yeah. like, bye. Bye. Hug. You're not, not disengaged, bitch. Disengaged, bitch. And that brings us to the end of Vanderpump Rules. Thank you all so much for a wonderful evening of the supersized episode. We love you, Philadelphia. And we will see you the next time we are here. We, we hope we'll be very soon. Good night. Watch What Crappins would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Alison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Dana C. Dana Do. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. Kristen the Piston Anderson. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. There ain't no problem that Sarah Salvia can't solve ya. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Erica, 500 days of summers. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Undo your fasteners, it's Aaron Kastner. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Chadley. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurray. Murdo. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey. Scammers are best known for living the high life, globetrotting on private jets, dining at five-star restaurants, and driving six-figure sports cars. That is, until their house of cards collapses and they're forced to trade it all in for handcuffs and an orange jumpsuit. Scamfluencers is a podcast from Wondery, hosted by Sarah Hagee and Sachi Cole, that tells the unbelievable true stories behind some of the world's most infamous scams, swindlers, and con artists. Scamfluencers has covered jaw-dropping scandals, from Ponzi schemes to a fake Saudi prince to a sexual predator masquerading as a wholesome yoga guru. These scammers cost their victims hundreds of millions of dollars and a measurable emotional anguish. So how does our culture allow them to thrive? Each story on Scamfluencers will take you along the twists and turns, the impact on victims, and what's left when the facade falls away. Follow Scamfluencers wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Hello there, podcast listeners. My name is Justin Long. I'm an actor, but I also have a podcast called Life is Short. I've been doing it for a couple of years with my brother Christian. We've been having so much fun, in fact, that we decided to do another one, a spinoff show. We should say what the name is, right? Oh, yeah, it's called Life is Shorter. It's a and very important part of this promo. <laughs> and uh, that's my brother. That, that's him. That's Christian. And he, you know, he keeps me honest and he is critical in a very positive way, I would say. Um, and he's a brother. He's my uh, yes, brother. And I like to hit all. I like to hit all the information. I like to hit all the points. <laughs> yes. And um, most important of which is the name of our <laughs> spinoff podcast called Life Is Shorter. It's a spinoff on Life Is Short. So if you like puns and podcasts and brothers and us, then you might want to listen on Friday. Yeah. If you'd like to hear more of this banter, check out Life Is Shorter every Friday wherever you're getting your podcasts, wherever you're listening to this.